Hi, I'm Wojtek. Uh, I'm a senior uh, software engineer at, uh, it doesn't go like this, Particle. Um, I know if you guys know uh, what we do. Uh, we manufacture uh, uh, um, internet uh, connected modules for Internet of Things, which look like this, um, which can have uh, Wi Fi or uh, 3G modem, basically. Um, and they are like Arduino, but in built in Wi Fi or 3G. I don't know if, how many of you guys uh, played around with uh, Arduino, uh, but it's basically a small computer that can control uh, um, stuff like LEDs, uh, um, um, servos, um, anything basically that uh, um, is like mechanical or physical. Um, and the thing about like those devices that we actually do, um, they try always try to connect to uh, our cloud. They try to be connected uh, um, to one specific place. Um, which basically helps us um, helps our customers to control those devices and uh, do a lot of um, interesting features. Um, which, by using those four uh, functions when writing a, a, a software for this device and flashing this onto this device, uh, users can use our API to call a function on a device. So you can use API to turn on the LED on the device. Um, they can expose variables from the device to the API. So you can check, use, you can use API to check the uh, current temperature on a sensor that's connected to the device. Uh, and you can also publish and subscribe to events. So like device can talk to each other. You can subscribe to events that devices uh, publish. Um, so a lot of communication between those devices and those devices and uh, your cloud. Uh, just the connectivity part. This, that's just basically the model modules and the um, all cloud backend uh, on it. On it. So basically, just just a platform for this. Um, another like cool thing about the uh, the thing that those devices are always or at least most of the time connected to the internet. Uh, you can update the code over the air. You don't actually have to be physically near the device to update it. Um, so. Like this is something that you start your project with. This is a prototype, but then uh, you scale. You actually manufacture products. You build uh, intelligent uh, thermostat. You sell it to you, your users, and then you actually want to update the software while it's already in your users' hands, so you can do it uh, uh, very easily. Um, and also, you can um, manage fleet of devices, like hundreds, thousands, or millions of devices um, uh, quite easily and um, react and analyze the data that comes from your users um, and adjust and use it to actually develop um, better software. Um, so basically to handle those two uh, uh, problems, we created two Ember apps. Uh, first uh, is Built, uh, which is our um, web IDE. I'm going to, uh, okay, maybe not this much. Um, and yeah, like we try to keep it as simple as possible. This is the entry level IDE. We also have uh, um, particle dev, which is more advanced. Uh, um, but this was supposed to be uh, like easy, uh, like Arduino, and um, um, it has like couple of couple of features. It for like you can have multiple apps um, um, available wherever you are, and. Uh, Thanks to this, um, you can basically um, have any code and flash compile it uh, um, while in a browser. And if the uh, um, code compiles, which it did, uh, you can basically flash it to a device. Um, it also helps you to manage um, all the devices. Um, you have lists of your devices. You can add add them. Uh, um, you can um, change the def default firmware version you want to use on a on a device, um, and a lot of uh, um, interesting things with, with devices. So if you have a device selected, you can just click flash. Um, the thing is, the device is in my office, so <laughs> you won't you won't see the result. Um, uh, but yeah, if Flash uh, has been so successful, so the device is updated and I'm not even there. So it, it already changed, changed the code. 
um, and also to help users um, build products faster and, and make it easier, um, the IDE also has um, libraries. So this is, this is just a brain. It doesn't do anything by itself. But when you connect uh, a temperature sensor, uh, when you connect uh, um, like LCD screen, like any button, something, uh, you need to write some code to actually support it. You have to write some code. And basically, what we try to do is port as many libraries as possible and have them in this one place. Um, so uh, um, basically, uh, um, using this, you can just include um, example code um, um, and, and, uh, and write your software that connects to this uh, uh, sensors and whatever externals. And, and yeah, like if any, anyone wonders, uh, this is uh, Ace Editor. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, um, the, the back stuff uh, uh, in a bit. Um, but yeah, that's like a, the, the, the whole app um, is, is an Ember. It's 1.0. <laughs> we are going to update it as soon as possible. Um, first, we have to remove the uh, legacy uh, Rails backend uh, because we're going to we have one common uh, API, which is backed by Node, and we want all our tools to use it. And um, so uh, all the features that are currently here are available in our other tools or whatever tools anyone can build uh, on top of our um, API. So yeah, that's the, that's the one uh, uh, um, Ember app that we did. And the second thing that we wanted to handle is uh, fleets of devices and and how how to manage uh, a product um, in 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 a company because that's the thing we sell those to hobbyists but we also sell the, them to companies like we sell them to companies that make internet connected coffee machines so then um, basically when when they buy them um, the customers they are our customers but they have their own customers so how do we help them manage their customers? Um, so this is why we created a uh, um, dashboard, which is separate app, it, which is uh, uh, more recent, actually. Um, and what it allows us to do, basically, it's, it's when, um, um, as, a, as an organization, you can create products. And um, those products um, can have different levels of access, like just part of your people in your organization can uh, modify them. Um, you can you can basically see all the devices, see the, if they're online, what's the last time they were actually online, which is sometimes useful when uh, um, some device hasn't been online for a long, long time, and you can basically maybe check up on this. Um, and also, it allows um, users, or, well, uh, organizations, to manage uh, their firmware versions. So if you want to update, um, new code on all the devices, you can basically say, hey, this is the, the latest version I want all the devices to get. Um, and then when the devices wake up or are available to update, they will actually get the latest version and update themselves. Um, it has a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of checks like uh, if the coffee machine is in the middle of brewing coffee, it's not going to be like, you know what? Yeah, now I'm, now I'm going to update myself right now and just spew coffee all over the, the, the table. It just actually, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to mm, ask the device like, hey, are you ready to receive an update? Yes, I am. Then go ahead. Um, so this way you can, um, you can basically manage what is the, the software that is supposed to run on your devices. Um, and it also allows... Um, um, it also allows you to roll back, which is very useful if the uh, uh, latest uh, firmware version that has been distributed to all the devices has a bug. Like, I know if anyone of you has a, a Nest thermostat, but latest version bricked it. Um, so I hadn't, I hadn't had a thermostat for like two weeks because they had to send a replacement because they weren't able to fix it remotely. Um, so yeah, uh, we can basically, you can basically hit a button and say, yeah, I'm just going to roll back and all the devices will come back to the, um, to the previous state. Um, and you can also uh, um, basically watch the events from the devices. So whatever, what they do, um, um, you can, you can 
uh, um, seal of it. Hmm. I forgot that we have uh, a third uh, uh, Ember app. I should, <laughs> I should, I should get it, get it too. But um, um, this is this is a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, module. We also have um, a 3G module, which uh, we give uh, a SIM card with. So basically, um, in this case, we wrote the whole. Uh, um, whole panel that shows what's the current uh, data usage, what's what's the cap, how to increase it, and stuff like enabling and disabling SIMs. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the uh, uh, our uh, um, second uh, Ember app. And um, yeah, like like I said, the stack um, we mostly use we mostly use uh, Ember. We did. Uh, I think two React apps, which were more of a experimental thing, uh, and not to be, not to be, basically they were a statement about not becoming an Ember shop. Basically, just just saying like, okay, maybe we should have a bit of distribution. Uh, but the 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 most important apps of our stack are um, are using Ember. Uh, like I said, they are backed by uh, Node.js and and Express. M most of our like. 90, 95 percent of our stack, uh, our backend is basically uh, um, Node.js and, um, and Express, and it's all backed by um, um, MongoDB, um, which basically connects very easily with this. Um, this way, and um, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> We're also hiring. Um, so if anyone uh, um, thinks that um, internet connected devices are cool and writing IDEs is cool, and when I'm saying IDEs, I don't mean Eclipse. Um, I mean cool uh, 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 Ember um, IDEs. Uh, let me know. I'm going to hang out um, a bit um, so you can ask me anything. And uh, yeah, thank you. Do you have uh, are there any questions? <laughs> Just interested in the product. Uh, 19 bucks uh, for uh, um, um, this one, which is called the Photon, which is the Wi-Fi kit. Um, the um, 3G kit um, starts at uh, 39, uh, and I think 49 for the 3G version. Uh, and, the, and the thing is, um, like you can just go to our website and just buy it. Like you don't need to sign any NDA, CLAs, whatever A's. Uh, basically, you can just buy it and tinker with it, and if you decide that, okay, this is like whatever I did is cool, and I want to sell it, and you want to, I know, go to Kickstarter with it, um, you can basically use the same thing, uh, but in a smaller package, which you also sell, and you can also order it on a on a website, and basically uh, um, ship your product with the same code, and without doing any changes. It needs a, a, um, a power source. In this case, it can be powered by a, a, a from USB. Um, it also has a separate pin uh, that can be used to charge. Um, the 2G and 3G version has a, a battery that you can uh, power power from. Um, we can you can also use like a, a, a solar panel, which like in case of the 2G and 3G version, it's it's. Um, it's it's designed to basically be in a remote locations like I know maybe maybe it's in a forest or, or something um, so it's really low po low power uh, low power thing but uh, yeah in case of in case of the Wi-Fi one well we expect like if you're in a Wi-Fi range you you have some plug somewhere so yeah it doesn't really uh, um, it works in a battery but is it designed to be uh, plugged into like actual uh, power source. Hey guys, look Yeah. Um, um, the, the the thing is, uh, our firmware is open source, and uh, we already have we already have, and um, with recent huge overhaul of firmware, it's basically uh, our o own stack can work on anything you want. Like if it's it can it, it can work over Zigbee. I don't think there's there is implementation for for uh, um, Zigbee. Or is it? Maybe someone is working on it. Uh, there's definitely there's definitely uh, um, a separate version uh, that uses uh, Bluetooth low, en low energy. Um, 
there are some uh, um, uh, um, someone that plays around with Laura and 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 uh, this kind of thing, but uh, the thing is, it definitely it definitely can work. It's it's designed to work on everything. And with the three G two G side of things, do you also manage the pricing for the data, or do you buy sort of that separate? We uh, we partnered with uh, Telefonica, so we are uh, we are basically an MVNO. And uh, we sell their data, uh, but the thing is, the the SIM you're getting, uh, you don't actually have to do anything with the Telefonica. You only uh, talk to our APIs and and our our panel, and um, and the 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 current plan that that we offer uh, works in more than hundred countries. Um, so yeah, we we also sell data. Uh, for this, you can like if you want, you can also use uh, a SIM card, like your SIM card with the device. Uh, but what you should uh, check first is your agreement with your operator, because there's like like 99% chance that there's a, a one clause which says this SIM cannot be used for M2M communication, which is the machine to machine uh, usage, which basically scratches most of the SIMs to actually be usable for even playing around um, because it's basically breaking the agreement with the operator. They, they notice, do they? Um, that's the thing, like, if you <laughs> want to abuse it, they shouldn't. Like, if you do not put stress on their network, they're probably going to be fine. They, they won't, won't notice. But yeah, if you, would, if you have a bug that basically streams data or like streams debug logs, over the air, yeah, it's possible they're gonna see that. Nah, that's that's not a cell phone. Like, like it's, it's not someone watching YouTube. It's it's uh, uh, like you know something that malicious device basically. Is that, is that what they're protecting against? They're just expecting these machine machine devices to do a lot more data transfer. Than that's the weird part. Uh, it, they do less actually, uh, yeah, but it's yeah. more of a, it's more of a, this is where's the money. So they actually it's want to say, yeah, yeah, basically. So they don't, they don't Doesn't that be violate the neutrality of the network or something like that? Um, I'm not sure. And that's that's an interesting question because because that's <coughs> it's my traffic. I do whatever mm. I want. Um, yeah. So yeah. Well, they they. Yes, you can expect it. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's not it's not about the actual data which is sent. It's the device that does it. So it's um, like if if. Um, um, if if they basically treat this as a um, not certified device, like we did not test this device, we don't know what it's gonna do. Probably we go, it's gonna make our network unstable. If it's make our network unstable, then other customers will get angry. So this is why we are not allowing you. That's the official version. The unofficial version is well, just come to and talk to our sales rep and. Uh, and <laughs> then you're gonna see. And that's the thing. Like usually, if you're what, like one person and have like five devices, it should be fine. Um, but if you don't want to like have any troubles, you can just you know give us the three bucks a month and have a sim that's gonna work in hundred countries without roaming costs and like just <laughs> have something that works. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you.